I welcome you all. I am Samuel Ojo and I'm going to be your lecturer on the course GST202. The material we are going to be using is titled Innovation and Creativity, as you have, as you have seen on your screen. Understandably, the two virtual classes we've had, I realized that quite, quite a number of students were unable to join for whatever reason. So that informed my decision actually coming up with this lecture so that on, on your devices you can have you can have the content listen to it over and over again before attempting questions and all of that okay now when we are talking about creativity it is actually your ability to bring something new into existence mind the word something new your ability of bringing it into existence okay it is not all about that activity it's not about what you want to bring but that ability that thinking capacity is what actually we call creativity okay a person may therefore conceive of an idea and envision how it to be useful and the person will not necessarily take action to make it real when we are talking about innovation on the other hand it is the process of doing new things it is the conversion of that creative ideas in the first instance into marketplace reality the value Okay, when we are talking about creativity and innovation, you are creative, you have the ability, you are able to think about it. Now, when we are talking about the innovation, now it's making that creative idea, making that novel idea into a marketable idea. That is what, that is actually the major difference between the creativity and innovation. Okay, now when we are talking about creativity, it's like a tendency to generate new ideas new possibilities the your ability to process thinking out of the box breaking away from conventional patterns your ability to explore new possibilities for instance in the world of technology elon musk has made significant impact demonstrating creativity by envisioning envisioning entirely in new modes of transportation such as hyperloop this reimagines high speed travel a fundamental aspect of human cognition that can lead to development of a novel product and we see where he is today in terms of the financial prosperity now in order to be creative you need to be able to view things in a new way not that others are having problem they are seeing problem and you are there with them seeing problem at, at the same time being creative means that why they are seeing problem you are there seeing solution you are seeing things others are going towards the left but you get to ask questions why don't we just move to the right what if we even not, we are not even moving to the right why don't we just fly you understand in the last like, class class I, 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 I we had i was talking about you now envisioning something like okay now, if I, if I want to walk, if I want to travel to Lagos, for example, from Abuja, you either go by here, by road, or you go by water or whatever. But what if something is attached to my human body? And with that, I could fly it. I'm not talking about the flying in the night and all of that as per Africa. But that is just hard idea that has come to your head. Like, what if there is a technology that I could actually attach to myself? And just a button press, I go out without me booking Arik airline or whatever. That is creativity at that point. Okay. Now, when we are talking about innovation, your ability of bringing that idea into a marketable, into something that is marketable, is what innovation is. So that is actually the difference between the two. Now, according to Holt, there are stages of creativity number one is idea germination idea germination i, I will put with you to go through the content as you have it online okay idea germination so when we are talking about this is a stage that involves initial formation of, of your idea it often begins with curiosity or interest in a particular subject or problem for for, for instance sarah has an idea to create a unique dish and this begins with her curiosity about exotic spices and ingredients. Her initial interest in these elements, they are the ones that germinate into culinary concepts. 
others are joining this and joining that so sarah was like what if i do something new that is the uh, that's the first stage according to Holt. that is idea germination the second step is preparation once such an idea has taken shape creative individuals actively seek information and knowledge related to the idea you conduct research you gather data you explore different approaches to solving the problem or developing the concept that is the second stage now for example to realize that dish that sarah had sarah actively seeks knowledge about various cooking techniques gathers her ingredients and explores different approaches to creating flavorful and visually stunning meal okay that is the second stage now the third stage has to do with incubation after the idea has been thoroughly explored and researched it is allowed to incubate in the subconscious mind this stage actually involves giving the mind time to assimilate information you are giving the time the, the, your mind time to digest the information process the information assimilate the information and mull over the problem the problem about the concept and how that for example the sarah that we are using in this instance after hours of preparation Sarana allows a creative cooking ideas incubate into her subconscious mind. She takes a break, allowing her mind to subconsciously assimilate this information and mull over the ditch potential. The fourth one is illumination. As you have it on the screen, illumination. This stage is when the idea surfaces as a realistic creation. Like you are seeing tomorrow today you are envisioning, envisioning it on your head it is a critical stage where the idea becomes meaningful and tangible so it's like you are forming something on your head and the thing was getting clearer over time is the point where creative ideas find a way to transmute ideas into something concrete for example during the period of inspiration in the in the kitchen as for sarah sarah's culinary idea surfaces as a tangible creation she discovers the perfect combination of flavors and presentation turning a creative concept into delectable dish the last one is verification once that idea has been eliminated it needs to be verified for its feasibility and usefulness this stage involves involves refining the knowledge gained during the preparation stage and transforming it into practical application let's use example that sarah sarah needs to verify its quality by tasting it and seeking feedback of that dish from others she refines the recipe incorporating the knowledge gained during the preparation stages okay those are the five stages as identified by odds. Now, let's go quickly to what Adams identify to be critical when we are talking about individual creativity. Okay, number one is knowledge. Number one is knowledge, according to Adam. It says that it is very essential. When we are talking about being creative, it is very, very essential for you to be knowledgeable. You can't tell me you are creative without being knowledgeable. And this has to do with having a breadth of understanding across multiple disciplines and expertise in one or two areas. You are not the type that says that I'm such an expert in mathematics. Every other subject, I'm not good at them. You can never be creative because there is no island of a subject, let alone of an individual. Now, for example, a scientist with expertise in chemistry and biology will be able to combine their, this knowledge to develop a groundbreaking medical treatment. Their diverse knowledge across multiple disciplines will be able to contribute to them having a creative breakthrough. The second stage, according to Adams, is thinking. Your ability to generate novel ideas by combining previously disparate elements along with analytical and practical thinking let's imagine a problem solving consultant who creatively combines elements from different industries to develop a novel strategy for a client 
he was able to demonstrate the ability to generate innovative ideas by integrating different elements from different so that's what thinking is, is about you are you are synergistically bringing things together okay the third one is personal motivation the, the content is actually online so I, I expect you to still explore read the material outside this material there I, I have additional materials there way which you can actually go through as well the third one is personal motivation you are not the type that is until they push you to go to class before you go to class it, it is until you see your friends joining up for virtual class before you join you are not the type that needs to be motivated before you do things they have what is called intrinsic motivation. And the last class we had, I said, I said something that it is not all motivation that are positive. It could even be a negative motivation. Something terrible could happen around you and that triggers your reasoning, triggers your thinking that for this not to happen again, I need to do something. That is motivation. Something must motivate you. You must have that personal motivation, intrinsic motivation, your passion to work combined with appropriate motivators and, and self-confidence for example an artist is intrinsically motivated to create art this could be fueled by by his passion for self-expression and artistic exploration this motivation and passion drive is what will help them to create new adventures you don't need you don't need somebody to coerce you into getting things done you are self-motivated yourself According to Adams, the, th the, the fourth one is environment. We keep telling the government create a conducive environment. There is no way you can be creative individually without having an environment that is conducive for creativity. Okay, a non-threatening and non-controlling climate that encourages idea combination and recombination is necessary when we are talking about creativity. Now, for example, a tech company fosters a work culture where employees are encouraged to collaborate and share creative ideas without fear of criticism. This non-threatening and non-controlling environment helps them to have creative ideas. They exchange ideas. That is what we are talking about, creativity. And the environment should help you also to be creative. The fifth one is explicit decision to be creative. You cannot force someone to be creative. The person must self, be self-decisive to be creative. You must make the decision to be creative. Making a conscious choice to be creative and having a metacognitive awareness of that creative process. Imagine an entrepreneur who consciously chooses to embrace creativity as a core value. Encouraging their team to think outside the box in business development. They make a conscious choice to be creative, fostering a creative culture within the organization. So that means that as an individual, that decision to be creative is personal and you make it personal. Okay, that's the last one, according to Adams. Now, when, let's look at the factors that encourage creativity. As we have very briefly, idea generation, thinking personal uh, motivation, environment, then your your personal determination to be creative, okay? Now, there are char characteristics identified of an of a creative individual. There are char characteristics of a creative personality. Number one, energy and rest. Creative individuals, they have a whole lot of energy, but they can also be quiet and they are very restful. Restful in the sense that they reason and they allow their heads to rest. You are not the type that is restless. You are jumping from this side to this side without being coordinated. Okay, A prolific writer has, has bursts of creative energy during which they write, followed by a period of rest to recharge their creative juices. This alienating energy and rest circle allows them to have sustained creative output. Okay, there will be a time you work, there will be a time to play. Now, the second characteristic is that they are smart and they can be naive. Creative individuals, they are often intelligent and they can also possess a sense of naivety. A brilliant scientist who is open to unconventional ideas and approaches, even if they challenge 
established norms, they exemplify the combination of intelligence with a sense of naivety. Okay, now the third one has to do with playfulness and discipline. Playfulness and discipline. Creative individuals, they exhibit a combination of playfulness and discipline, but they are able to balance responsibility and being irresponsible. A successful playwright it will, it can balance the playful heart of imagination with the discipline of adhering to strict writing principles or shadows. This duality of playfulness and discipline enhances their creative work. Okay? The next one is imagination and reality. There is a say that they alternate between imagination and fantasy, as well as having a rooted sense of reality. You are imagining something that is not real, as though they are real. So that is the imagination and reality. You are seeing tomorrow today. You are seeing future today. That's the reason you see someone that will open his mouth and say that, I see so, so thing happening, happening tomorrow. He's not referring to tomorrow. As per you wake up and, and, and you sleep and you wake up tomorrow. He's talking about the future, but he's bringing, he's drawing it closer to you today. That is imagination and reality. The last one, sorry, the next one is extroversion and introversion. Creative people, creative individuals, they can display tendencies toward the both extroversion and introversion. For example, a marketing manager who is exhibiting both extroverted enthusiasm when presenting ideas and introverted reflection when developing them. Their creative process encompasses tendencies toward both extroversion and introversion. They have both tendencies. They can, they can easily switch between. So when it is time to be serious, you have them serious. When it is time to be playful, you have them playful. When it is time for them to keep quiet, you see them keeping quiet. It is not by you putting on tie. It's not by you 247 going to and all of those that, 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 me, that speaks volume of you being creative, okay? The last, this next one is humility and pride. They are remarkably humble and they are proud at the same time. How? An award-winning artist can be humble about his sources while taking pride in his work, showcasing the unique combination of his humility and pride at the same time. Ah, the guy is very humble. But when it comes to defending his work, you see him taking pride in his work, that no other person can beat my work. That is the combination of humility and pride there. Another point is that they can be humble and at the same time they can be seen to be proud. They are remarkably, remarkably humble and proud at the same time. For instance, an award-winning artist could remain humble about his sources while taking pride in his work. When it comes to him showcasing the unique the uniqueness of his work, you will see him displaying the sort what people call pride because it will let you know that no other product could do better than the one that he has presented. And this same person you will see to be humble. Now, another point is rebellious and independent. They are often seen as rebellious and independent. For instance, a social entrepreneur, <coughs> entrepreneur he challenges the status quo by creating innovative ideas innovative solutions to societal issues without relying on traditional systems. They reflect reflecting qualities of rebellion and independence, you know. They act as though they are all on their own. They could act, they could do things without anybody supporting them and all of those things. Another one is most, most creative persons are very passionate about their work. Yet they can be extremely objective about it as well. Extremely objective in the sense that they want to receive what are the feedback that you guys have about it, what are they ideas what are the feedback that people are having about it but when it comes to being passionate about presenting you see them as well having it now the next one is like openness and sensitivity of creative individuals often exposes them to suffering pain yet also a great deal of enjoyment since that when they are going through what seems to be a very rough time they are not just going through they are going through innovatively they are going through it creatively they are enjoying it as though at the end of it they believe that something good will come up for them those were the characteristics of a creative individual okay let's quickly go through what is creativity and what is then creative thinking now when we are talking about creativity creativity refers to the ability to generate or recognize ideas as we all know ability to generate 
alternative ways of doing things, at, uh, uh, ability to recognize and generate possibilities that may be useful in solving problems, that may be useful in communicating with people, that may be useful in entertaining people and all of those things. But when we are talking about creative thinking, it is the process or an act of using one's imagination and critical reasoning to generate solutions to perceived problems or challenges. It is a deliberate tasking of the mind to find solution by, res by resorting to imagination or sort of critical reasoning. When we are talking about creative thinking, it involves sort of actively engaging in the process of generating new ideas. Like you are very passionate about it, you are very particular about it. So that is creative thinking. You are engaging your subconscious mind intentionally. Okay, that is creative thinking. But when, when we are talking about creativity, it comes like a flash. Then you, 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 you start building it following several stages that we have looked at severally. I mean, that we have looked at previously. In summary, creativity is the ability to generate new and unique ideas. While creative thinking is the active process of using imagination and critical reasoning to come up with solutions. In the sense, creative, creativity is a broader concept.